A few videos back, I asked if anyone could share with me your photos of how your setup is done at home, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so many people responded that we're actually gonna cut this into multiple videos. Now, the point of this isn't just to make fun of those for doing good things or bad things, though I think that might be kind of fun and entertaining. The point of this is to point out some things that you might be doing at home that aren't safe, as well as look at some other users' creative solutions on how they can make resin 3D printing at home actually safe. That way we can continue to resin 3D print at home for the foreseeable future. And with that, let's get going. Now also, I'm gonna keep this completely anonymous. Uh, no names or anything like that for whose setup these are, whether or not they're good or bad, except for one, and we'll show you that one at the end. So first, to get started, let's look at this guy. Um, so right now we can see this is their living room, uh, given that they've got their TV right here. We've got a lot of external light that's gonna come in through this door, um, a little bit through this window, but not much. So this really won't be an issue until they're right here, looks like on this cleaning station, which is located, uh, looks like in the kitchen. Uh, so when they're cleaning right here, this is going to be exposed to the UV light just happening around the house. And it can kind of cure, especially like on the build plate. Uh, resin can cure pretty quickly to even the sunlight. So um, maybe this user hasn't experienced the issue where they're trying to remove it and it's like kind of sticking on it or stuff's getting tacky while they're cleaning it. So something to just keep in mind, um, you generally want to try to do this away from any sort of UV light. But one thing I really do like to see is that we've got ventilation coming out of the top and this big grow tent kind of securing the printer. So I think we've got another picture here that shows us what that looks like. Yeah, so here we are on the inside of the 3D printer. We've kind of got the same thing we saw earlier where we've got, uh, yeah, here's the ventilation fan just coming out of the top right there. That's actually pretty nice. So we can see that most of the, it looks like, yeah, he's gonna be actually removing the 3D prints off the build plate uh, inside the grow tent here, which is nice. That's nice and smart. Just right there. That's where they're gonna, he's gonna remove them and then he'll bring them out after the fact. So that should mitigate the issue with the sun. Got the fan at the top there. And this is the, where the washing is happening. Uh, looks like just a couple buckets, the stuff like that. So the other part is, of course, when, when you're washing, that's actually when a lot of the VOCs are being released into the air, especially if you're using IPA though. The resin in the IPA is going to kind of evaporate. It's going to act like a carrier that's going to pull up those resin fumes. That's actually going to be the most toxic time of when you're in there working. So obviously you're going to want to have a respirator, but the air is going to get mixed into the house. So the one thing I would advise this user to do is also put the cleaning into a grow tent as well and, and vacuum that out. That will also keep the sun away during the, the cleaning process and just make this whole thing much, much safer. I know they have grow tents that are actually much larger, so if they wanted to, they could get a grow tent that could contain both the 3D printer and the cleaning process or just, you know, have it in two. All right, and here we got another user. Now this one is in a garage. We can tell because, well, there's a garage. We've got a fun little garage door over there. And they've got a really big grow tent, kind of what I was talking about before in the last one. Looks like we got a heater vent or a exhaust vent that goes all the way outside. Even in the garage, the garages are generally pretty uh, open to air as it is, but that's gonna definitely do a lot more to even make it better. And here is inside of the grow tent right there. That's pretty nice. It looks like there's a little, got a little camera uh, mounted on front of the GK2. He's got the two printer, the, the cure station and the wash station all inside of this grow tent. So it's a completely contained unit out in the garage with a uh, vent. So this is gonna be very, very safe. Uh, even that grow tent's gonna keep away dust. Things in a garage are gonna get dusty and sometimes that dust can get inside of the, the resin and you know now that can make things worse. So a, a really good setup. Uh, we've got another user with another big grow tent right here. That is a very nice setup. Uh, really nice airflow right there that's gonna be sucking out. I don't know where the exhaust tube is, uh, maybe in a different picture. But this is a really big grow tent, even doing some monitoring right here, uh, probably for temperature and, and stuff like that. Could even be part of the airflow going on in there. Looks like there's a filter on this one. Uh, you don't really need to filter the air. You really definitely don't need to filter the air that's leaving. You're just sending it outside. But I'm not sure if maybe this is like a cold air return. I don't think so. But if it's cold air return, then you would want to filter that so you're not pulling in like dust and crap from outside and throwing that into your 3D printing area. Again, I'm not sure that's what he's doing but it would be smart if that's what you were doing. Okay, we got the same setup here. All right, so, geez, that's really nice. Um, especially from this angle. So you can definitely see there's a lot going on. This is a nice space, nice big space with uh, yeah, a lot going on here. Uh, we've got a nice little camera set, a light setup. If you don't know, once you start 3D printing, you're gonna invest in like really good lighting and the camera because you're gonna wanna take pictures of all your stuff. Uh, it's just kind of the thing that happens 
We've got another uh, right here for painting, which is really, really nice. This is like a, a, a two system airflow, one for the resin, one for the painting. Keeping this area nice and safe, uh, especially when you're down here for a long period of time. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm assuming this is, remains closed most of the time and it's only open for photography re reasons, but a really good setup overall. I like this little rack right here with the gloves and the, and the napkins. It's all very convenient off to the side. Some drawers down here for storage, really nice, really smart. I know not everyone has a room or space this big, but if you do have a space this big, even if you're just copying this whole setup on the left, that's a really good setup. That's not too big of a table if you think about it, but that would keep everything really, really well wrapped up and safe. Another setup here looks like we got an Anycubic, that's a wash and core station right there next to a window. So maybe there's some airflow. I think the printer's probably inside of here. It's kind of the same in a little area right there. I can't tell if this is carpet on the floor or not. Um, but we want to be careful about 3D printing over carpet. If you get any spills, it's going to stay on the carpet forever and that's going to be a really terrible nightmare. So I'm not saying that there's any like actual airflow. There's a window here, maybe they could open up. Uh, but same thing though, I would probably just get a bigger grow tent uh, or get a second grow tent for the wash and cure. There's a lot of VOCs that are released during the wash process. So that's really where we want to make sure that we're actually venting out as well. Um, venting during printing, not necessary. Venting after a print's done, been done if it's inside of a, a tent like this one. So you can actually not vent during the print and then vent it all out before you open it. Uh, that's actually going to keep all the VOCs of the print out. It's going to vacate them before you unzip it. And the next thing that's good about that one is if you're trying to keep your printer at temperature and you're not always pushing the air out 24-7, it's going to help maintain a, a better temperature. All right, here's another one. This is inside of a closet. Uh, we've got a 3D printer inside of the grow tent again, another one outside, wash and cure outside, um, and some wooden trays and stuff like that down the bottom, and a little um, ultrasonic cleaner. So on this one, um, I, I know who this is, and there is, I, I can't see this picture, but I do know there's ventilation um, that comes out of this closet that does help out quite a bit. And I, the user also put in a plastic cover over it. So they're kind of expecting the, the walls of this closet to act like the barrier. The problem is, is that your closet is gonna be porous. It's gonna absorb a lot of that smell and stink and toxins. So in something like this one, if you were to stage a closet and vent it out, the one thing you might want to consider doing is actually removing the shelving that's in here, even though it's nice that it's convenient. But I'd actually remove the shelving, put down plastic, or put in a really big grow tent and kind of barrier the entire, all the walls off. Because if you ever move away from resin 3D printing, uh, this closet may have a smell in it that may be really hard to get rid of. You're probably gonna have to paint. If there's any carpet, replace the carpet to get rid of this smell if it's been in there for a really long time. It may dissipate over time, but I think you'll always have a little bit of a smell. All right, look here, we've got, it looks like in a basement, I would suggest, because we've got the uh, water heater uh, or the heater off the side here, or the, sorry, the furnace. Um, so we're in a basement. I like the plywood behind it, but I would probably, uh, plywood's gonna absorb any resin that splashes. I would get some plastic sheathing or something. You can even get like uh, MDF that's been painted or like you know, the panels that are uh, got a paint on them. I'd put that behind it so it's something that's non-porous. Uh, not that it really matters, but you know, just one more thing to do. I do like the setup down here. Good shelving, good use of space. Uh, is there ventilation though? It's in a basement. So even if it's in a basement, those air can come up especially if it's an unfinished basement, you know, up here through the, uh, up through the stairs, stuff like that, that smell can just come right upstairs. There's nothing really stopping it. Uh, same thing, it's got the closet. Uh, same thing, that's some mats down there, it's nice. So, okay, in this one, I do see they've got a uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So the ultrasonic cleaners, personally, I use one and I use it with IPA in it. Uh, I know you're not supposed to, but I do. Um, but I do it with ventilation over it, so it's sucking that any, um, IPA that may be evaporated because of the cleaner is going to get sucked right out, so it's not going to build up and create a bomb. I also don't use the heater on it, so if you're going to use an ultrasonic cleaner, there's a couple ways to do it. If you want to be really safe, you actually fill it up with water, and then you put, uh, you have basically bags that you're with IPA. You'll put the resin parts in the bag, you seal the bag up and put that in the water. That's not going to really degrade the how well the supersonic cleaner works, um, and that way you're not going to have an issue with like the buildup of the IPA and possibly a fire. Personally, I've not seen a fire or heard of a fire or anyone talked about a fire with IPA when it comes to a uh, supersonic cleaner, but there's always a first time for anything. And so just be cautious if you're gonna use one. All right, now this, I thought this one was really cool, even though this, this isn't resin 3D printing. I don't know if this is like a custom built shelf, but this thing right here is awesome. I mean, look at that, it's got, again, I'm not sure if this is, you can buy that or that's just how it is. 
I'm really not sure. Um, you can let me know in the comments if that's something you can actually buy. I'm mean, not gonna look it up, but that's that's something else, I'll tell you. All right, so here we have something I see far too often. Now, I'll tell you one thing I'm surprised about. Usually when I see a space that's very cluttered like this, what I see is a printer that is covered in resin. Fingerprints, handprints, the cover, the case, everything, resin everywhere. And often what I see from those users is damaged LCDs, damaged printers, printers that aren't working properly. And I just have to assume that if there's resin all over the printer, there's resin all over the LCD as well. This is interesting in that it is a very cluttered work environment, but the printers are like clean. And even the wash and care station back there looks pretty clean, uh, which is surprising. I usually don't see that those two things don't mix well. So my thing to this user is um, uh, cabinets are awesome. Get some cabinets, get some drawers, organize some stuff. If you don't need it, get rid of it. All right, here we have an office building. Now I've seen a couple office buildings in this one. Office buildings are a little bit scary because the airflow is circulating through the entire building. There's a lot of airflow happening, but you're mixing your air from your 3D printers into the rest of the environment. Now this office could be so big and the airflow could be so good that by the time that happens, it's so diluted, it doesn't really matter. Or it could be circulating over and over again and could get pretty bad. But that's really not my biggest concern here. My biggest concern here is actually the carpet. I've got all this carpet here. And we've got uh, great racks that are just, um, looks like maybe there's some plastic there. I have a hard time telling. It looks like there's plastic there. If there is plastic up there, that's better than if it can just go right through. Because if there's a drip, it's just going to go right through the bread rack onto the carpet. And then you're, you're kind of screwed. It could still spill. Uh, it could get on the walls, you know, get on the carpet. And you're going to have issues. So if you're going to do something like this in an office, of course, one, make sure you do have airflow that's going outside. But the next thing I would do is I would get some plastic mats. Maybe the ones that you can put like under an office chair or get some linoleum. Linoleum is really cheap and just roll it down underneath the racking. And at least that's going to make sure the carpet itself doesn't get resin or IPA or drips or anything saturated in it. Um, and then just make sure you can get, you can also get like plastic rolls uh, you buy for like putting down in pantries and stuff. I would roll that out over the ladder racking. That way you also have a little more barrier to spills and stuff like that. It makes it a little easier to clean and drips don't just get down everywhere. So this is showing the exhaust. So this is the system right here. And they've got the ventilation inside of this rather large grow tent, which is actually a really nice grow tent. This is big enough the user can actually walk inside of entirely um, with some shelving in there, which is really nice because everything is just completely contained. They still have the airflow and they've got a little, I like seeing that, the little uh, hair dryer right there just kind of dry things out. Um, yeah, they got their wash station, the cure station, and the printer right there all contained in the grow tent. And, you know, then you've got the airflow right here and the airflow is in fact... To this right here and so it's just exiting out so it looks like they're in a maybe a basement and they only have this one window that opens up sideways so just use some cardboard and the vent hanging out uh, my assumption would be this is a temporary solution i would look into uh, if you're going to do something like that one i would do plastic there's plastic corrugated or plastic cardboard plastic cardboard um, you can use that to fill the window if you're worried about like weatherproofing then you can actually even buy sheets that are specifically designed for putting in your window. They can like expand and stuff like that. They actually have a slot designed for the for the vent. But if you're just gonna DIY, DIY it yourself entirely, do it yourself DIY, yeah. Uh, this is a good method to doing it. Uh, just some cardboard in a hole. All right, and now for the grand finale, the one user who I am gonna name who they are, and this is the Amerilab setup. So this is their, they sent this to me. They wanted to kind of show the community the way that they have built their lab out for extreme safety and also some of the resin testing development that they're doing over there at Amerilabs. So the first thing here, we have a modified microwave, uh, a couple of them, which are basically where they're going to heat up the resin uh, before they cure it. Actually, no, sorry, they're heating and curing. So this is actually has curing stuff inside of it. So it's warming and curing the resin together. I actually have no idea what this machine here is in the center. It looks really expensive though. Um, and you've got like a wash station over here with little gloves and another heating system. Um, maybe it's a pressure chamber. They're using that to remove some bubbles. I'm not sure on that one. I'm sure some people in the comments know exactly what those machines are, but I do not. All right, moving on. So, okay, now we have a good in, inside view of their really modified microwaves with heating elements and the UV elements that they're using to heat up and cure the resin. If you don't know, heating up the resin before you cure it and heating it while you cure it actually gives you a harder, more, um, stable cure, which is going to make the part overall inherently tougher. Um, with toughness, you do get slightly more brittleness. Um, so it's a trade-off between toughness and brittleness. But generally, that's that's what you get, a tougher but slightly more brittle part when you heat it up. All right, and here's another one. Okay, so that's what that machine is. It's just 
like a really powerful uh, curing station with with uh, suction. So it's it's curing it in a vacuum. That's interesting. I wonder what I wonder what they're getting at by doing that. Curing inside of a vacuum. So removing the air. Oxygen is an inhibitor to curing resin. So basically, by doing it without oxygen, uh, that's interesting. That's that's kind of cool. Uh, there's their door into their lab. I like that ventilation system up there. You can kind of peek. Uh, definitely. So yeah, coats, gloves, uh, eyeglasses, danger, you know, danger and death. Uh, this is a, looks like a cyclone, looks like a dishwasher or a washing machine that's been converted for washing resin prints. And I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, it's a modified washing machine to cure prints or to wash prints. Uh, there you go, uh, all up in the setup. So gloves, uh, mask with a VOC respirator, glasses, nice lab coat. Personally, I wear um, a big heavy apron and I wear gloves. I did use these little blue gloves at first, but I actually switched to using a five mil or six mil glove that's much, much thicker. I found that, you know, sometimes removing supports, it'll rip. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that 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 caution. Uh, so I went with a thicker glove and I basically never had a rip since. And it's been nice. Um, there's their testing machine in the back. That's pretty awesome. More testing machines. There's their, see they got a super they got a, a supersonic cleaner in the back as well. Uh, a lot of Elegu, a lot of Saturns back there. Um, very nice. I think they show one. Yeah, the ventilation. This is my favorite part. I actually want to build something just like this um, when I build like my 3D printing uh, lab, crazy mad lab. Um, I want to put the same kind of ventilation up here with the uh, where it just kind of goes around the top and has those things on it. That's really nice. Um, lots of printers. It's a nice row of lots and lots of printers, so I'm pretty sure this room could get pretty stinky. Uh, these are kind of interesting, where I basically have the the dispensers right there mounted at the table. It's actually, I wonder if they sell anything like that in the US. I've never seen anything like that before. We can just kind of pull it out. Um, that'd be nice. But yeah, pretty good setup. All right, and with that, I think you know what time it is. It's time for you to like this video and subscribe to our Yulaichi YouTube channel and join us on our Discord server if you haven't already. Also, don't be afraid to share this video with your friends who you think might need it. Uh, no hint included in that one. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.